Hello and welcome to Live Wire Markets. My name is Chris Conway. On today's episode of The Pitch, we're talking about why now is the right time to invest in healthcare opportunities. To do that, I am joined by Matthew Strutton. He is the Executive Director and Head of Real Estate at Real Asset Management. Matthew, welcome. Chris, great to be here. Uh, before we talk about the RAM Healthcare Opportunities Fund, can you just set the scene for us? What makes Australian healthcare such a rich opportunity set at the moment? It's an interesting time for the market, not only because we've been experiencing such volatility in capital markets and uh, and what everyone's well aware of in, in this inflationary period that we've gone through, but it's given healthcare a, a little bit of a, of a chance to sort of uh, reset itself in terms of what it means to be an investment sector for commercial real estate. Healthcare still is a maturing asset class, and in this environment, it's giving investors a great, uh, an opportunity to perhaps consider a wider range of opportunities mm -hmm. from the listed sector to the unlisted sector and across the risk spectrum. There is a, uh, you know, a, a greater range of opportunities now for investors to pursue the asset class. And I think in this environment where there's heightened interest around the, the, the financial health of some of our operators uh, and the ability to then pursue related real estate in and around the sector, I think is giving rise to more and more interest in the sector. Matt, we seem to be at an evolutionary point in healthcare. What exactly does that look like and how are you standing by your, your partners as they reassess the landscape? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. It's quite a prominent uh, body of work for us at the moment. We're sitting down, engaging with our operators, listening to what they're experiencing. Like, like many sectors, not just healthcare, but like many sectors, this financial volatility, this financial market volatility, as well as a sustained level of volatility and inflation, uh, and certain other elements that have affected healthcare, like uh, like labour shortages and labour costs, input costs rising, uh, is is causing operators to take a closer look at their models, mm -hmm. uh, both their financial models, their their uh, operating models, the, the manner in which they're investing capital to grow their existing models. Maybe they're revisiting their their operating models, and all of those potential changes that they look to address give uh, additional changes invariably it's a rise in the needs for their commercial real estate um, that's um, that's where you know the, the partners like RAM come into the equation the greater that we can understand those needs as they evolve particularly in times like this is going to give rise I believe to a, a, a greater range of commercial real estate solutions uh, you know the word you mentioned there is is the evolution and the evolution of those needs is um, is indeed changing. Uh, you know, the, the, the typical form of, of healthcare real estate solutions is is evolving over time. It's becoming uh, more localised. It's becoming a, a model that is more and more hybridised with the public hospital provision, uh, the public health system provision, you know, combined with the private healthcare provision. And uh, and as I said, as a as a, a landlord to a degree, but more what I see as a a working partner alongside our operators to find and nurture those real estate solutions. I think it's it's a very interesting time, and as you say, it's a somewhat evolutionary, yeah. um, least of which because of the volatility we've experienced and how that's I I drawing operators to revisit their models. Matt, just a follow-up question there, if I may. So, as your partners are reassessing their opportunity and their real estate needs. Are they looking to extract more from existing assets or are they looking to new assets and new locations to expand their opportunity set or is it a combination of both? Look, I think it's almost consistently a combination of both. Um, some of the larger hospital provisions at the moment, it's, a, it's an interesting story that where you, you do see uh, the hospital expansion of services you know that, that combine with the pre-existing hospital services and then you see a you know a cath lab introduced or there'll be an, a, you know additional services almost like they grow organically over time yep. at one end of the spectrum we, we still see that uh, some of our partners are continuing to do those expansionary works notwithstanding I think they're taking a little bit perhaps of a pause yep. in in how they expand but the provision of new services a lot of our deal flow pipeline is working with uh, in the private uh, operator space and expanding uh, the day hospital provision which as I noted before is really becoming a bit more localised mm -hmm. so they're looking to expand not not just in major uh, urban areas um, but looking a little bit further towards outer suburban as well as regional locations because these these day hospital provisions uh, are becoming more effective the treatment is becoming 
uh, so I'd say more effective again because treatment's being able to deliver in a, in a shorter time frame. Recoveries, recovery times are reducing, so our operators are responding to that and introducing, uh, yeah, again, it's a simplistic way of uh, almost more localised solutions. Matt, you've talked already a couple of times about volatility. I want to hone in on interest rate volatility. What impact is that having and why is now the right time to be considering the opportunity when you know, higher interest rates for a lot of other mm. asset classes aren't a good thing? It's the forward looking nature of real estate um, where interest rates have really you know, taken their toll. That the, this initial volatility and now really where, where investors, uh, where operators and, and fund managers alike are, are expecting that interest rate volatility not, not only just to cease but where is where are interest rates going to land and will that be at a sustainable level and how that contrasts with cash yields uh, and total return expectations and in and beneath that the potential for for future uh, leasing tension to in, in effect to be able to offset those rises in cap rates through rental growth a lot of a lot of um, equations in there but what it has done, like we've all witnessed, uh, that interest rate volatility has caused a repricing in cap rates uh, across all sectors. Uh, that's, that's impossible to deny. I do believe healthcare has, has probably fared the storm uh, quite a deal better than, uh, than retail and office. I think, I think there's a little bit more to come. I think the consensus is that interest rates may, there is still a, an element of unknown left in where interest rates are going to land. Uh, the statement that we will have interest rates at a higher level for longer. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I don't think is, is such a bad thing for real estate. I think that the thing that concerns me with real estate is the, the, the ongoing uncertainty with what volatility remains. Yeah. If we were to look ahead and, and, and were at least somewhat more uh, convicted in the notion that interest rates might be at, at or around this level for a longer period, that's a that's at least a more firm firmer set of um, of, of uh, sort of footprints to work from than um, than the volatility that we've experienced. So you will see cap rates reach a, a new level of equilibrium in all of our sectors. A lot of that will come down to that uh, that investor demand, which we which you and I spoke about earlier. Uh, that starts to re-emerge, looking for relative value in Australia. That's that will be, I think, the next most um, uh, poignant indicator of where cap rates are going to sort of safely land. The re-emergence of capital, particularly from offshore investors taking a look back into the Australian market, I think that capital has been a little bit more subdued mm -hmm. over this last 12 or 18 months, I think quite rightly, you know, yeah. to, to, to witness these, this repricing. Once we get closer to, uh, you know, that where investors are confident to start putting you know, capital back to work, that'll be a very strong early indicator of where I think pricing is going to stabilise. Matt, let's uh, crystallise this for uh, the viewers. Can you tell us a little bit more about real asset management and the healthcare opportunity that you guys offer? Yeah. RAM has been uh, investing in healthcare for close to 10 years now. Um, uh, most, uh, most will be aware of our listed vehicle that came into the A6 in late 21, which is uh, investing in both healthcare and essential services retail assets. Um, at or around that time and sort of in, over the last couple of years we've been looking at, which is really a natural extension of our skill set in healthcare, to become a little bit more uh, focused on delivering you know, bottom-up solutions in healthcare rather than pursuing pre-existing opportunities, which we still actively look at. Uh, we felt it was um, the right time to invest internally and, and, and form a team that were uh, actively looking to pursue development and, and um, value add opportunities. This was, you know, in effect, rather than buying pre-existing, let's go and and build a program that can that they build those opportunities and invest for the longer term. But doing that meant um, really bringing on board a team that was a little, a little bit uh, non-traditional. Uh, we've got uh, construction experts that have been that have long-standing relationships building and operating private hospitals as opposed to a traditional uh, investment or development manager where there might be a, a landlord operator relationship. We've worked more to embed ourselves as a, as a solutions provider that can work with and alongside our operators. Healthcare, the expansionary needs of our operators in healthcare really, really is, is, is somewhat um, uh, sort of symbolised by that because operators work so closely with their development partners, their landlords, to not only deliver upon the, the, 
the identified solutions, but to work together to find new ways to grow. Uh, and having a, a strong partnering approach there is, has been very important to us. And I believe it's paying strong dividends with our operators who get to appreciate a, it's not just a, as I said, that landlord partner relationship. This is really a, a partnering approach to, to work on both those identified and to be identified real estate solutions. Matt, thanks for sitting down with Lovewire. Uh, thanks, Chris. It's great. If you enjoyed that episode of The Pitch as much as I did, make sure to give it a like. And don't forget to follow our YouTube channel because we're adding lots of great content every single week.